Hey, what's up, guys? My main deck in Clash Royale just got big buffs after the balance changes. We were able to swap out the Goblin Cage for the Goblin Hut and overwhelm our opponents easily. Now Spear Goblins come in waves of three, dealing more damage, and when you're stacking up with a lot of bait cards that your opponent has a minimal amount of spells for, that's going to create serious problems. And we swapped out the Electro Spirit for the Mighty Miner. Mighty Miner got a speed buff, so he moves faster than ever. With split pushing strategies of Rail Hogs, Rail Recruits, and Flying Machines, if you spread your opponent thin, you'll be able to win. Especially when your opponent doesn't have that much Elixir and the Mighty Miner is moving faster, it'll be a disaster for every opponent when he locks onto the tower because he's essentially a Ground Inferno Dragon. His damage ramps up quick. Mighty Miner became one of the best cards in the game after the balance changes. But if you don't have him, you can use Electro Spirit instead. It's cool to see my main deck in Clash Royale gets so much better. So let's go jump straight some games and assert dominance. Lots of love to everyone that's using credit codes or tag to support the channel. All right, so getting into the game, we're gonna go for Zappies in the back and we're gonna see what's happening. Immediately when he rushes through with the Hog Rider, you guys know the deal. We wanna go Goblin Hunt. So I've dedicated nine Elixir already. He's dropped five and now he's dropping seven. So this is okay. We do get counter push with the Zappies, but at the same time, they're not really going to give me anything unless I go in for Rail Hogs. I'm going to split them up in case he's going to have Fireball. He's actually going to have Bomb Tower. So, Bomb Tower and Valkyrie. Yeah. Hello, Darkness, my old friend. Not necessarily the matchup that you guys want to see when you're running Rail Hogs and Rail Recruits. When you see that amount of splash damage, you might run the other way. But we're up for the challenge and we'll see what we can do. Maybe we can challenge our opponent. Kind of want to Fireball this because then we're able to one-tap it with a Fly Machine. Oh my gosh, do I hit the Ice Bear too? What the heck? Yo, we got so lucky with that. I can't believe he dropped the Ice Spirit within the vicinity for me to finish it off. We're also going to Barbro and hopefully hit all the skeletons too. No, I missed one of them. Oh, I tried to time it perfectly so it'd still be in vicinity to hit the Hog Rider and finish off all the skeletons. It is what it is, Barbarian. You had a little bit of work left in you and you also ended up getting damaged by the skeleton too. Must just not feel good getting hit by a skeleton there. Okay, do we go in for a Goblin Hut again? There's a chance he's got Earthquake in this deck too. Oh, man. There's a high likelihood that that's going to be the case because whenever we see Bomb Tower, it's usually going to be Rocket or Earthquake instead of just having like a traditional Fireball. Hmm. Do I Mighty Miner same side? I think that's probably the best bet. You go Mighty Miner same side as a Valkyrie. You can go Recruits on top of the Musketeer and then we can get huge counter pressure that way. Don't know if this is going to work, but we have to try it. He's likely going to go in for a Log on top of the Mighty Miner. The Mighty Miner isn't going to give me much anyway. Oh my goodness. Mighty Miner, you're supposed to be melting a whole bunch of big tank decks. Wait, you melted the Bomb Tower? Wait, that was pretty good. I didn't expect him to do that. Mighty Miner's putting in the work. Oh my gosh. I gotta go Barred Barrel here just to pull back the Valkyrie. And then if he goes in for a Hog Rider, I want to make sure that all of his other stuff is targeting the Barred Barrel. Whether it's Skeletons or Ice Spear or anything else like that. Okay, he ended up going for the Ice Spirit slightly later. We're going to be able to go Goblin Hut, and I think that still pulls, even though I dropped it really late and low. That's exactly what we got to do sometimes, because I can't allow him to get damage. I'm going to go in for Royal Hogs, and I can Fireball on top of the Bomb Tower. I think this is going to be best for us. If the Spear Goblins plus Fireball eviscerate the Bomb Tower, maybe we can get some extra damage. Look at the Royal Hogs. They're not actually doing damage, but they're tanking for the Goblins, and the Goblins are coming through. They know what to do. Okay, we're going to go for another Mighty Miner. I can go in for Zappies again in the back. And despite this guy having, you know, a stellar amount of answers to us, I think he might have given up. I think he might have clicked Mission Abort. He knows that my tower's up 2,000 damage on him, and he didn't want to even try to come back. He's just like, I'm done with this game. Get me on to the next one. So this Mighty Miner Royal Hogs Royal Recruits deck can even make people rage quit when they've got Valkyrie and Bomb Tower. And that feels sublime. Super easy stuff. Let's keep climbing up. So I'm going to go Royal Hogs. This is a very risky and bad play 99% of the time. Imagine your opponent's got Bowler plus Tornado, like this guy. Why is he not cycling his Tornado? Okay, never mind. That worked out really well because the guy didn't do the play that he was supposed to. Or maybe he didn't have the right card cycle. Or maybe he's gearing up to all in me with a Graveyard Freeze. In any event, I need to save my Barbarrel in case he's got Graveyard. It's one of those few ways of cleaning up all of the Graveyard Skeletons since you don't have Electro Spear in this deck anymore. Instead, you have Mighty Miner. You kind of need to save that Barbarrel in case they whip out a random Graveyard Freeze. I'm going to use the Mighty Miner ability just to be able to knock back both of those things so maybe the Zappies can lock them to the tower. Yo, that was so good. I feel like the Mighty Miner ability has so much outplay potential. It's one of the few cards that I think you have to think about when you use the ability. Most of the time, you click the Archer Queen ability for one Elixir, you always get value. Like, it's hard to not get value with one Elixir ability there. With Skeleton King, it's a two Elixir graveyard. It's obviously overpowered as well. However, the Mighty Miner ability, if you click it at the wrong time, and you don't do it correctly, you're maybe going to, like, tickle a bowler, barely even do anything with it, maybe even miss your Mighty Miner bomb explosion. Like, there's a lot that can go wrong. Oh, my gosh. Wait, that bowler is going to be tragic. 
Oh, wait, 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 wait. We can keep the spear goblins alive. We can keep the spear goblins alive. No! Well, we had one spear goblin stay alive, and now he's laughing at me. Um, or maybe he's laughing at himself because he didn't really pull most of the royal hogs with the tornado. I don't know, but I'm here for it. Let's keep spamming. I'm going to go in for our Mighty Miner because Electro Giant is out of cycle. I think we want to be able to kill this quite quickly. So I'm going to go in for the Mighty Miner ability. Uh, no, I don't want to. I just want to be able to kill the Goblin Cage. The Mighty Miner ability would have given me absolutely nothing. It would have just went right back on the Goblin Cage Brawler. See, I had to think about it there, you know? Most of the time, you just go in Herb Derp, click the Archer Queen ability. It deletes everything, and then you watch it, and you're like, satisfaction, pure skill. Oh, man. I'm going to go for a Fly Machine here because it will eviscerate the Baby Dragon. A lot of times when you drop your Spear Goblin Hut and you're playing against someone that has Electro Giant, they're going to take advantage of that and spam you immediately. So I kind of want to save my Zappies for that in case that's the case. Oh my gosh, you have Mega Minion too. I didn't even, I didn't even acknowledge that that was a possibility, that the homie would have Mega Minion. He's got Mega Minion to kill our Fly Machine in two shots. This is going to be a tough time. I want to encourage him to go for Electro Giant into the Mighty Miner, which would be a really bad decision. And if he doesn't, we can just go in for a Goblin Cage and pull the Electro Giant really far. Notice this. Isn't that crazy? You guys might think that that wouldn't be possible. Also, he has barely any Elixir, so I click the Mighty Miner ability, go in the other side. He uses Barbro, and now we can go Royal Hogs again. Notice how the E-Giant is about to die here. The E-Giant is straight up going to die to Spear Goblin Hut. And then I can Fire a Ball again on top of the Mega Minion, and I don't have to respond to this at all if I didn't want to. I can go in for a Flying Machine. <laughs> and clapping Electro Giant was just so satisfying. Also, that clap? Dang, that was loud. You guys might have actually even been able to hear that. That's kind of what we did to the E-Giant player out here. He's laughing right now, but he's uh, kind of crying in the inside. You just know that he's feeling the fireball. He knows it's going to come down. And he understands that his demise is absolutely inevitable. And all he can do is laugh and drop at the chicken emote at the end. He did not have a good time in that game because this deck completely counters Electro Giant. All right, we got another one here. The Punishers. Well, hopefully we can punish your tower real quick. All we need is you to overextend once to give us an advantage. He's going to go in for a Skeleton Barrel, so it'll probably be a clone deck. There's also a chance it's a Mega Knight deck. And if I go and split up Zappies, that would be a little bit better, but I kind of had to kill the Skeleton Barrel as quickly as I could. Maybe I can go in for Rail Hogs and split them. I'm going to make sure that one of the Rail Hogs goes in front of the Zappies so I can get more value. And if he Mega Knights on the left, then he's not able to hit all the Rail Hogs, so he feels like he's losing a lot of value there. Okay, so I kind of want to go in for a Mighty Miner, but at the same time, if I go for Rail Recruits when his bats are out of cycle, that's going to be a bit better. Yo, if I went Mighty Miner into the Inferno Dragon, that would have been horrible. At least the Inferno Dragon is completely wasting its time. So it's not going to give him any value really here. I think we can just get away with this and then go in for a, uh, a little bomb to knock back the Inferno Dragon to minimize the amount of damage and then barely take anything from him. So I'm in a great spot overall. The Spear Goblin is going to be a bit of a nuisance, but not too bad, right? Not too bad. So our homie's got a Mega Knight deck. We've got Royal Hogs. Hopefully, we can still make it happen. I know a lot of you guys are like, if I ever play against a Mega Knight player, I never win. But as long as you split up your Royal Hogs and you don't really focus on dropping Royal Hogs all the time, then you're going to have a much better chance of winning this matchup. The number one mistake that I see with this deck is people just spamming Royal Hogs all the time and not even thinking about what their opponent's going to counter it with. If you go for Royal Hogs and they die, they don't do damage to your opponent's units. So what happens is they get a whole bunch of units to counter push on you and you wasted five elixir then. So you want to go for Royal Hogs as a way of getting damage when you're already up in the push. And it's kind of like, you know, enhancing the momentum that you already have. So you have momentum going, you have an advantage, you want to keep rolling with the Royal Hogs then. But you don't really want to do that if you know that your opponent's going to counter it for a good trade. So instead, I would go in for Royal Recruits, which are able to tank for the Mega Knight. Also apply aggression on both sides. Just an overall better decision every single time. I'm also going to go in for a Mighty Miner here for the Ground Inferno Dragon, essentially. The Inferno Dragon's about to meet its maker, the Mighty Miner. And that should be enough. The Barbarian Barrel is going to be able to clean everything up. I don't think he's going to get any damage here. We can go for a very high a Goblin Hut here as well to say hello to the Skeleton Barrel. So when it pops, the Skeletons won't get near my tower. And then I can go and split Zappies again. So as you guys are noticing, time and time again, we are keeping up a solid defense. If I'm splitting Rail Hogs, I'm going to make sure that like three of them are going to go in the left-hand side, one of them in the right, and the side that I actually want damage. He probably has to Mega Knight in the right. Yeah, look at that. See how hard he had to overextend just to deal with one Rail Hog? Doesn't that feel horrendous if you're him? That's pretty funny if you're me. All right, so I'm able to go in for this and then go in for a Barbarian Barrel as well just to clean up all the skeletons that are, you know, accumulating. And then we should be able to outcycle his, his good answers, right? I don't think he's going to be back to Mega Knight when I'm back to Rail Hogs. Generally, Mega Knight costs more Elixir than the rest of my cards, so it's going to be hard for him to deal with it. Wait, he's already back to Mega Knight right when I'm back to Rail Hogs. Okay, never mind. I am sadly and gravely mistaken, my dudes. So I'm going to go in for a Goblin Hut here just to go and pull everything. 
and then I can maybe even go in for a fireball if I really wanted to, but I think it's just exponentially better for me to go Royal Hogs, since the Fly Machine doesn't die. And then I can Barb Barrel to pull back the Mega Knight, and then Fireball in the tower. So as you guys can see, we were able to get the Mega Knight out of cycle and eventually win the game, just because he kind of has to Mega Knight on top of the Rail Recruits to eventually defend. If he didn't Mega Knight, he was going to lose to the Rail Recruits, but if he does Mega Knight like he did, he's just going to get overwhelmed with Royal Hogs as soon as it's out of cycle. We successfully punished the Mega Knight player from the Punisher clan with Royal Hogs. It's a legendary world! What's up, dude? So we just want to test the waters and see how legendary it can be. I hate doing this, but I have to drop my Royal Hogs because I'm so uncomfortable with my start. Wait, it's going to be a Log Bait deck. So Log Bait deck with Fire Spirit. Huh. I think this has to be a good matchup for me. Most of the time, like, they want to go in for, like, a spell on top of the Goblin Hunt. But if they do that, you guys already know the deal. Royal Hogs are going to be a possible problem at every twist and turn. If I go in for Royal Hogs, it's going to give us a lot of damage if his cannon's not in cycle. So he can't necessarily do that as often as you would want. He's going to go for a Mighty Miner here. I could click the ability. I think it's probably better for us to just click the ability so then we can still distract the Dark Goblin and hope we have it die to the tower finally. Oh, no damage with the Dark Goblin. I have no idea how that worked. I was celebrating that for a while and I almost ignored a Goblin Barrel in my tower. I was so happy. I don't know if you guys ever had that happen before. You're like, oh, let's go. I did so well. And then you look back at the screen and then it's like, yeah, your towers are in shambles now. Great job. Well, unfortunately, that did happen. So we're still chilling here. Dark Goblin makes me feel like we're likely going to be playing against a double barrel deck. Or maybe just Mighty Miner, Dark Goblin without, you know, a good answer to us. Wait, this is an amazing fireball because it kills a Dark Goblin and gives the Royal Hogs value to get on the tower. I think I get more damage with the Royal Hogs than I would with the fireball in the tower. And if you think about it, killing the Dark Goblin is just an extra little bit of a bonus. So this guy is going to go in for a Goblin Barrel aggressively as soon as he sees that kind of want to go in for a Mighty Miner here because hear me out for a second. He doesn't have splash damage. He doesn't have Princess. He just has Mighty Miner. And we can reset it with our Zappies. No, Fire Spirit, don't do me dirty. I believed in you, Zappy. You persevered through the pain and you made it happen for the memes. That was incredible. The Dark Goblin is not going to be cycled very oftenly at the river, right? If it is, then I can shut it down with Royal Recruits. Oh, he's dropping it off to the right-hand side. I looked at the shadow of the Goblin Barrel and I deduced with my eyes of a hawk and I knew where it was going to go. If you guys are ever figuring out, oh man, I don't know where the Goblin Barrel is going to go, just look at the shadow. It's distorted depending on where it's going to go. And that's where you're able to figure it out a little bit easier. All right, we got to go Royal Hogs. Uh, I don't love this. I don't love this. Mom, pick me up. I'm scared. Wait, this is really good. The Dark Goblin's going to get focused. It's dead. The Mighty Miner got pulled back and the Dark Goblin just stood its ground so then we could finish off the Dark Goblin first, even though initially the Mighty Miner was tanking for everything. Okay, so I'm going to go Mighty Miner here. I could cycle back. I don't know if it's worth it though. I kind of want to go Barb Barrel on offense and finish off the Dark Goblin and then immediately go Recruits. Oh, this guy is so good. Oh, wow. He was good until it wasn't good. That was really smart for a second. Okay, so the cannon should be out of cycle so I can go Royal Hogs. The Mighty Miner's on the tower. The Mighty Miner's on the tower. Or not anymore. I guess I'm going to go other side with the Mighty Miner on the tower because there's more damage there anyway. Let's just Fireball and put him out of the misery. Let's freaking go! <laughs> Mighty Miner is absolutely overpowered in this deck and it's easy to see why. With split lane aggression, when your opponent's really put in a bad spot where they have no elixir and they can only afford cheap bait cards, the Mighty Miner digs a grave for those bait cards while burying the other side alive when it pounces on the tower. If you're running log bait and you match into this deck, there's absolutely nothing you can do. All right, we got a game against the captain. What's up, dude? Apparently he's the captain of the Vikings BR. So maybe the Vikings from Brazil? I don't know. We'll figure it out. This guy's going to drop a good luck. So seems like a pretty nice person. I'm going to give him a good luck back and I'll go for Zappies here. This is a pretty risky play. I don't have my Spear Goblin Hut. I don't have my Fly Machine. I might have to use my Fireball if he goes in for a Balloon. Luckily, he doesn't do that. All right, so my Zappy Cycle at the start are more so a byproduct of me being very, you know, just impatient. Not necessarily the best play to do. Typically, you want your opponent to make the first play with this deck, and then you get Counter Push. It's still fine, though. I ended up getting some damage on the left-hand side. I don't know if this is the good decision to go in for the Barb Rail here, but it seems like it's okay, because you ended up going for a Miner. And if you go for the Miner, we make sure that you don't have anything tanking with it. So we're chilling. No Musketeer damage, no value. Okay, so this is one of those situations that I've learned that you kind of want to cycle your Goblin Hut a little bit further back in the back and not even closer to the right-hand tower because he could Fireball it, he could Poison it since he's got Mortar. We don't know what big spell he's got right now. So I don't want to give him any opportunities out here. Okay, so also when the Musketeer is cycled, kind of want to go in for Zappies and then split them up and split two of them in the right-hand side because it's not going to be near the Spear Goblin Hut. So even if he gets more damage on the right-hand side where it's already gotten damage, it's going to be around even because I'm going to eat a Musketeer shot. So I think it's okay. 
The mall's gonna go for Royal Recruits, and then we're gonna be able to stack up a massive push. He's minoring on defense because he's so scared right now, and he wasn't even feeling comfortable applying aggression. Now we're gonna Royal Hogs all of them in the left-hand side, and the reason why I'm Royal Hogsing in this matchup is because the guy can't apply that much counter push, right? It's not like he's got a Mega Knight deck. It's not like he can really hurt me if I go for Royal Hogs. He's gonna go in for a whole bunch of like annoying like Valkyries or maybe Royal Deliveries that are very defensive cards. They can't hurt me on the counter push. So that's why I rail hogs early in single elixir in this type of matchup. Whereas if I was playing against a bridge band player that elite barbarians, you can't really go in for rail hogs that often. But if opponents are defending with cards that are like fireball or bomb tower or mortar, those cards don't counter push. So feel free to go rail hogs and trade with your opponent. But if you're trading into units that are going to counter push and, you know, punish you because you're dropping five elixir with your rail hogs, you can't necessarily do that all the time. I think that's like the number one mistake that I just see very often with players. So I'm just going to keep talking about that as much as I can whenever uh, I, I do go in for rail hogs early on. I just wanted to make clear why I decided to do that and that it was actually a good decision because of the matchup here. Anyway, I can go in for a fly machine again in the back on the same side as the musketeer. And the right hand tower is not going to be taken out yet. But I know that I can take out the left one easily with a fireball. And then I can get a mighty miner directly on top. Watch this. Wait, that's hilarious. Dude, I'm going to click the Mighty Miner ability. It's going to go on the Musketeer as well. He thinks he's going to be able to go in for an offense on both sides, but no. That Mighty Miner was our savior. Shutting down the majority of the Mortar, finishing off the Valkyrie, and also stopping the Musketeer from being a threat for us as well. That's why Mighty Miner is one of the best cards in the game when played properly. It can cover everywhere on the map. It can dig you out of trouble on all sides of the map. Like if you enjoyed, subscribe for more daily videos, and have an incredible rest of your day.